Hello, I'm DJ Mafi from WICBFM. Thank you for watching this video. I'm so excited because today I am joined by Jake Asman, who is a sports uh, broadcaster, radio personnel. Uh, you may recognize Jake. He was on WICB a number of years ago, and it's a great blast in the past to have him back with us and talking about where he currently is in his career. So we're gonna talk about what he's been doing, and how COVID-19 has affected his work dynamic. So just a little bit about Jake. He is currently the national host, a, cur a, national, a host on SB uh, Nas National Radio. He's also a reporter at ESPN. Um, and in the past, he's worked on the Olympics, uh, worked in Ithaca's ESPN, um, worked in ESPN in Ithaca, he had some experience in Fox, at the Fox Sports Radio in LA, and also at ABC Channel 7 in New York City. So Jake, thank you so much for joining me today. Matt, thanks for having me. I got the uh, WICB pen here in honor of this, uh, this sit down. So uh, very excited and uh, always great to talk with a, a fellow bomber. Awesome. Yeah, it's so great to connect with you and you know hearing your voice on air a number of years ago and then sort of being able to reconnect and see where uh, you are going, but also keeping in touch with us and, you know, is always wonderful as well. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we were talking off air before we started recording this, but, you know, as someone like you who's a senior that, you know, gets their senior year kind of wiped out just like that, I really feel for you. So I feel for all, you know, the seniors and everyone that's been affected by the virus and whatnot. And, uh, you know, hopefully things get back to normal as quickly as possible in the coming weeks and months. And, uh, you know, long term, this is just a blip on the radar and, and what's hopefully going to be, you know, long lives for all of us as we get through this. I agree. Wonderful, wonderful words, wonderful ways uh, way to describe that. And yeah, I think nobody really expected this and it's quite tough to, you know, sort of, especially when you're going through school or trying to, you know, you have a plan, you think everything's going to be one way and that totally changes, but because it just tests our humanity at the end of the day. So speaking about, um, you know, your connection to WICB, so like looking back a little bit, can you just tell me what your WICB uh, FM experience was like um, and sort of what you, how you were involved with the station? Sure. So um, during my freshman year, I got to Ithaca. So this was fall 2013. Um, I, I knew I wanted to go into broadcasting. I, I knew I wanted to go into sports radio. I didn't know if it was uh, play by play or sports talk radio or just being a sports update reporter. But I knew going into Ithaca that I'd have the opportunity to be a part of a really good college radio station and get an opportunity to get on the air right away which was huge. If you go to some other bigger communication schools, you know, it, it might take a year or two before they finally give you a chance to get on the air. But what was so appealing about Ithaca was the fact that in addition to the WICV, you also have, you know, the sister station and VIC radio that gives you opportunities to get on the air and, and get experience, get reps. And so I knew coming into Ithaca that that opportunity was going to be there. And, you know, within my second week or third week on campus freshman year, I already had like a sports update uh, on the schedule uh, on BIC radio. So um, it was, you know, just a blast to get that experience and get a chance to do some uh, sports updates, get a chance to host sports talk shows and, you know, use the prod room to record podcasts throughout my time there and just get experience. And that was always the, big, the biggest thing I tried to do uh, during my four years at Ithaca was just, you know, take advantage of the fact that, you're getting reps as a broadcaster you know if you want to be on air you know it's like practicing a sport or riding a bike you have to do it a bunch of times and then it just becomes natural and you get more comfortable and you know the biggest thing that WICB and VIC radio provided for you know someone like me was opportunities and you know, throughout my four years I got a chance to you know uh, cover the Ithaca football team as the play-by-play -play announcer and color commentator I got a chance to do basketball play-by-play -play. even we did lacrosse play-by-play -play and host sports shows and do updates and whatnot. So, you know, just the experience that ICB and, and VIC radio provided is something that, you know, I, I wouldn't be where I am right now if I didn't get that experience during my four years at IC. Right. That's, that's, that's amazing. I totally agree. I think that gives you so much experience and so much skill, real strong skill set to sort of, you know, launch into your career and, you know, continue on with radio. Did you do anything with Cortica at all? Yeah, so that, I mean, that was uh, honestly the probably the high the, the two highlights of my 
radio career, if you will, at WICB was the Cortica Jug getting a chance to call the game twice. Uh, so junior year, my junior year, uh, the game was at Ithaca. And Ithaca was coming off of, like, you know, they, 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 my junior year, the Ithaca football team was not very good for the first time in years. Like, they were going to finish under 500. That, actually, you know, I think they were, they were either um, five and five or they were like a 500 team. So they weren't great. But they played Cortland, who was having an outstanding season, really tough in that game. It was like an ugly 11-8 to 8 final. Cortland won, of course, because they always did at that time. Um, but it was just an unbelievable atmosphere at Butterfield, getting a chance to call that game and be a part of that um, from the radio standpoint. And then senior year, the last game I ever did on WICB was a really good Cortica game. Once again, Cortland won. But it was on the campus of Cortland and back and forth, really fun game to do. So those were you know two of the best games that I can remember getting a chance to cover. And then um, the other big member I have of just college radio and WICB was the chance to do our radio show from Radio Row, which was in Houston, Texas, which is ironically where I live now doing my radio show. But I got a chance to go to uh, Radio Row with Dan Budick and Jake Chernock um, for the week. And we did our show from a giant convention center where all these other radio stations were. And we were one of, I think, only two college radio stations that got to go. So just opportunities like that that you get as a young broadcaster, you know, working for WICB is something that, um, you know, I'll never forget. And it's some of the, you know, coolest things I've gotten a chance to do in my young career. It's amazing to sort of have those memories, always hold on to those that you shared. You know, you mentioned two other names that, you know, it's not only your friends, but people that you're sort of already working with and, you know, doing radio experience with, you could always, you know, bond over and something that, yeah, you could always, think of, wow, that I, I was able to do that because of WICB and the opportunities that uh, were available to you. So uh, I know you spoke about how you've been interested in sports, and I know you've had some um, experience with uh, uh, two Olympics. So I want to hear a little bit about that and what that was like. Sure. So, um, so this was tw summer 2016. I was an intern in Rio at the, the Summer Olympics, obviously. I, and that was with, uh, with NBC. And I mean, that's that's one of the great things about park. I don't need to tell anyone listening to this about, you know, some of the connections and opportunities you get just by just being a park student. But, you know, basically I think it was one of like a few schools selected where like you were, you know, given the opportunity to apply for the Olympic internship. And, you know, I was really fortunate that I, I, I was picked and got a chance to go to Rio, but it was kind of funny. So I remember I was on a plane or I was on the runway about to take off to go to LA my um, junior year spring semester, I studied abroad out there, or, or as I say, studied West because I didn't really go abroad. But I, and I, I saw I had a missed call and a voicemail from like uh, a Connecticut, a Stanford number, which is where NBC is based. And I listened to the voicemail because we were about to take off. So I, I didn't answer the phone, but I listened to the voicemail once we got in the air. It was like, hey, we want to offer you an internship here in Stanford for you to, you know, be a part of the crew for the Olympics. And I, don't get me wrong. I was really excited, but I think most people want to go to the Olympics. It's like a once in a lifetime experience. So I was like, okay, well, I'll call him back when I land or the next day because it was a late flight. And then it was wild because the next day I got a call saying, hey, actually, um, we, we originally told you Stanford, but we just had uh, a spot that opened for Rio. You listed on your application. Your preference would be uh, to go to Rio. I is it okay if we put you down for that instead? And I was like, uh, yeah, where do I sign? So I was originally supposed to go to Stanford and got lucky that uh, the Rio opportunity came about. But, I mean, that's all through – you know, getting lucky and just, you know, getting the chance to apply in the first place. And I spent almost six weeks in Rio, like three weeks before the Olympics even started. And then obviously about two and a half weeks once the games, you know, got underway. So, you know, getting a chance to watch Michael Phelps and Usain Bolt and getting a chance to, you know, see the Team USA basketball squad, you know, play a couple of times was a surreal experience. And just the, the opportunity to meet, you know, some of these broadcasters that work for NBC that I've emulated and, you know, grew up idolizing was, was a surreal experience. And um, it's something I'll never forget. And then, uh, you know, obviously, you know, here we are four years later, there's no even uh, Olympics going on this summer. So I feel for all the students that, you know, maybe don't get that opportunity to go because a year from now, 2021, someone that was going to be an intern that, you know, is going into their senior year, they're, they're out of school by then. So I, I hope that something could be done for those people that maybe don't get that opportunity after they thought they were going to have this great opportunity like I did to go and cover an Olympics for, uh, you know, five or six weeks, whatever it ends up being. Yeah, I definitely got a feel for those students who thought they were going to have that opportunity and, you know, didn't, but that, you know, you had an opportunity like that. And yeah, I would say no hate on Connecticut, but that, you know, 
Connecticut over uh, <laughs> um, Rio. Yeah, it, it makes sense. Of it. it's, like- it, it's funny, though, because um, when I uh, was out of school my first year after I graduated, I was working a couple part time radio jobs. I took off from both of them because my old supervisor in Rio was now working full time in Stanford. And for Pyeongchang, which was the Winter Olympics in 2018, in February 2018, they had a PA position opened up and they were like, hey, are you interested? And I was like, yeah, I mean, it, the, the money was really good. It was great experience. They, they put you up in a Stanford hotel for the month so, and they cover all your meals. So I'm like, all right, well, don't have to pay rent. Don't have to pay for meals and get a chance to, you know, go and, and technically be a part of the Olympics again. So I ended up getting that Stanford experience after all. It was just a couple of years uh, after when I was supposed to get it for real. It's the best of both worlds, I guess. Yeah, nothing like Stanford, Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> so I know now, you know, you spoke about some of your uh, prior experience with WICB, the Olympics, you know, working a little bit in Ithaca. Um, but after you, um, you know, we're with WICB, I know you are now with SB Nation, uh, National Radio. So can you sort of talk about um, that radio um, network that you work for? Sure. So it's kind of complicated. I was even telling you this off air. Right now I'm on furlough from both of my hosting jobs at SB Nation Radio and, and ESPN 97.5 Houston. The, the company that owns both those stations is, is Gal Media. They're my parent company. Um, so uh, just like most you know, companies in the world right now, people are going through tough times. There's not a whole lot of ad revenue that's coming into either of these uh, stations because of the virus and whatnot. So a lot of employees, unfortunately, were either laid off or placed on furlough. Um, the one positive of, of being on furlough is my employer still is covering you know, my health benefits. And, and on furlough, it means they have intention to bring you back. They just can't you know, afford to pay you because there's no revenue coming in. So I've been in talks with my boss and a couple other people at the, at the station on you know, getting back there in you know, the coming weeks. In fact, maybe even you know, next week for all. I know I don't want to put anything out there publicly yet just because I really don't know. And it's a very fluid situation as most things are right now. But up until the last three weeks, I was hosting a show every day on SB Nation Radio. And, and what SB Nation Radio is, is it's a national network and the programming originates from Houston, but it's a national show and it's syndicated on stations throughout the country. So our show was heard in Austin, Texas, or Denver, Colorado, um, a couple stations outside of Detroit, Michigan, just a bunch of different you know, uh, cities throughout the country would hear our show that would originate from a studio here in Houston and then Gal Media, which owns ESPN 97.5. I would also work for them as a reporter covering the Houston Texans, Houston Astros, Houston Rockets. And I would fill in host when some of the full-time hosts who had shows Monday through Friday were out. I would a lot of times be asked, Hey, can you fill in for this host and do their show that day while also doing uh, the national show I was doing. So some days were really busy, but it was a really great experience so far, getting a chance to do a local show in, in Houston, which is, I think, Radio Market 6, and getting a chance to obviously do a national show through SB Nation Radio, where you kind of get a chance to talk about whatever the big stories are in sports that day and not just kind of localize it and focus on Houston sports as you would on ESPN. So I've been here uh, since July of 2018. So coming up on almost two years now and you know, very thankful for the opportunity and hope I get a chance in the near future to get back to work because... You know, I, I have never been so bored in my life, uh, not getting a chance to be on the radio every day. Yeah, I'm sure that's quite tough to sort of, when you are used to just sort of having a routine and, you know, talking about sports day in, day out, see the same people, be on the air, have your voice heard on air, people recognizing that voice, you know, and then sort of being, you know, not having that uh, routine anymore and having that sort of dynamics uh, shift is probably a little difficult. You feel like you're letting down the audience too, like the, the listeners yeah. of the show. So we were on from yeah. me and my co-host, a guy, a guy named Cody Stutz, who's a great, great guy, a really good friend of mine, like radio professional. You know, we were on for four hours a day and then all of a sudden, you know, we get furloughed and we can't be there for the listeners anymore as everyone's lives are being, you know, flipped upside down and whatnot. You know, we would take solace in the fact that we were a nice distraction from you know, the coronavirus, that we would have some fun and, you know, we'd mix in some sports talk with some real life talk and it, it would be a good back and forth show. And then, well, you know, I think the last show I did was March 30th. So, you know, we were a couple of weeks into the, the madness of the virus at that point. And then to kind of just be like, all right, well, you're no longer on the air anymore. You feel like you let down the listeners, but, you know, obviously that's, that's out of our control. And we hope to be back on the air soon in some capacity. Right. And I'm sure like everybody's going through it. I've been saying it's, it's a, it's a worldwide problem. Like everybody in the world somehow I feel like is affected or knows somebody or, Definitely. you know, 
there's, there's lots of people being affected worldwide. So and that's the biggest thing. I'm thankful that I'm, I'm safe and I'm healthy. And that's, that's most important with something like this. And I wanted to check in with you also, but it sounds like you're doing well, which is good. So, yeah. And that, that four-hour show that happens um, every day, once a week, what was the name of that show? The show was called The Main Event with Jake Asman and Cody Stutes. So it was weekdays, 4 to 8 Eastern. And then uh, we would – we would talk about, you know, whatever the big national stories were that day from a sports perspective and mix in some pop culture and some other fun stuff we'd, we'd, we'd have in there. I think, I think kind of the days of just like only talking about sports, I think it's kind of over. And I think you even see it with something like this, with this pandemic that like radio talents and like on air people, like you can't just be like, uh, uh, like only a sports person because there's not a whole lot of sports to talk about right now. So you got to be able to talk about different things and, you know, you use sports as a, uh, like as the conversation starter, but you don't always stay with just talking about sports. Like there were days we let our show breaking down Tiger King for an hour, mm -hmm. just like things like that, that everyone's watching because there isn't sports to watch every day, you know, things like that you adjust and you adapt. And, and that's one of the really cool things about, you know, going to Ithaca, right? You get a chance to, to get all these reps, get that experience. And then that helps you, you know, when you get out, be able to be, you know, versatile and be able to do different things. For sure. And speaking about that, I think I listened to one of your shows. I think you were, I don't know if it was you or Cody, somebody was saying that like going to like a grocery store or something and like with the COVID-19. Yeah, so there you go. So uh, yeah, so I, 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 you know, I find other things to talk about. Exactly. So, you know, I, I told the story on air. I think that's the clip you might have heard about, you know, my first time going to the grocery store when like yeah. the pandemic was like taking shape here in Houston and people were wearing the mask and, you know, people are hoarding the toilet paper and I'm watching this firsthand going, wow, this is absolutely insane. And then, uh, I don't know if this was the same clip that you heard, but I, I like at my local grocery store here in Houston, I befriended like the dairy guy that would give me a tip on when like the trucks were coming in so I could buy like my, my fresh eggs so I could, you know, make my breakfast every morning. He's like, oh, come back around 1.30. The, we'll have a fresh batch of eggs for you. And, and you know, little things like that, that, uh, you know, people will find funny, get a kick out of. That's what we try to do during this on the radio. Amazing. And it is all about the networking and the inside scoop when you know those uh, going off the tangent a little bit when you know that they're going to be restocking the uh, shelves. <laughs> yeah, I got to develop sources right. with your uh, supermarket employees. Exactly, exactly. Um, so you spoke a little bit about that show and then the Jake Asman show. I know you also have that uh, show as well that you host. So can you talk a little bit about that show? Sure. So every Sunday night, um, I do a show. It was uh, 7 to 10 Eastern. So it'd be a solo show. So obviously, you know, during the week, Monday through Friday, I was working with a partner, which is great. And I, and I honestly, I prefer to work with a co-host because I just think it's, it's so tough to be entertaining by yourself. I, I like the back and forth you can get with a co-host and having that conversation. And it's a lot harder to be by yourself, but sometimes it's, it's an awesome experience just to be able to like take a topic and rant about it for 10, 12 minutes and take calls from the listeners and you'll know, go on Twitter and see what people are saying. And it's kind of a different type of show, but it's a great experience getting a chance to do that um, on Sundays. And it's a, it's a little different than the show I do Monday through Friday, but you know, it's great experience. And you know, the, the chance to get on the radio and, you know, sink or swim you know light goes on you're, you're by yourself like you got to fill time like there's no one you can go to like you got to be able to fill the segment and and be able to not just fill the segment but you know be entertaining be interesting otherwise why would you listen so uh it's a it's a fun challenge and i enjoy doing that as well yeah and I, it's talking about like that sort of back and forth i was a co-host for morning drive for a number of uh you know past few months and yeah sort of just having that other personality that other person you know sort of on air really doesn't make a difference versus just solo i think there's something special about solo but then also to have that back and forth and it's I know hard you, you know everyone's like oh i could do it i know a ton about sports i could do it. it's like okay well you know maybe you can maybe you can't but like i'll give you the microphone here's the topic you talk about it for 10 12 minutes without help and you yeah. and you tell me if you could do it and right. and it, it's not easy to do and you know, you got to just do it and do it and do it and get those reps and get better because it's all about just being comfortable behind the microphone and being able, you know, to have a conversation with, with your listeners. Like there's no one in the studio, you're by yourself, but you're talking to your audience, you're talking to your listeners. So you yeah. got to find a way to get through and, and, you know, the great ones can, and I'm certainly not great, but I, I, I've been able to get enough experience at it where, you know, I could get through a segment by myself. I can get through a three or four hour show solo and, and make it work. And, and, and that's a real challenge without a co-host. Yeah, and sort of keep that entertaining, keep it fresh, keep it feel like you are sort of having a conversation with someone without actually that person being there. So, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Um, and then I guess also I'd love to hear about some of the high 
moments, like, you know, things that stick out to you about your career um, so far, people you've interviewed, wonderful topics you've spoken about. What are some things that you look back in your career and you know, like, if there's like a slideshow, just like the best moments, like what would consist in that uh, slideshow? Oh, that's a, such a tough question. Uh, I, I, I've been really lucky for someone my age to have some of the experiences that I've been able to receive. Um, you know, we, we talked about the, the Rio uh, opportunity, the internship there. I mean, that, that was certainly a highlight. I mean, I, you know, I got to meet Bob Costas and eventually have him on my radio show that, that senior year at Ithaca. So, I mean, that was such a cool experience getting a chance to kind of come full circle with that. I, I've been fortunate that I've covered the last four Super Bowls from a, you know, done shows from Radio Row where, you know, I've interviewed some, you know, incredible football players but I've also interviewed the Backstreet Boys little Nas X like Martha Stewart just like crazy celebrities that have been on the show that I've gotten a chance to talk to so I, you know, I'm grateful for all the Super Bowl opportunities and you know honestly one of the real fun parts about you know this business is covering live events when there's a big event and you get a chance to do your show at the site of that event it's a surreal experience I, I've been to Las Vegas uh, three times in the last year for big boxing fights that I've gotten a chance to cover um, so that's been a, a lot of fun. And um, w one of the coolest events I ever got to cover, and it was only because it was on Long Island where I grew up, and I got to spend the week with my dad, who I got a media pass to be there for the week with me, was the PGA Championship at Beth Page Black. So it was a golf tournament. It was one of the big majors, uh, you know, getting a chance to watch Tiger and Phil and um, all the top golfers in the world that you know, gathered on, you know, a golf course on Long Island, 10 minutes from where I grew up in Syosset, Long Island was such a, a surreal experience and you know, I spent the whole week with my dad and, and, and got him passes to watch the tournament and check out my show with me during the week. So um, like little things like that, like the, the events you get the cover that I've been lucky enough to be a part of so far in my career, that that's kind of, you know, some the, the, the big memories that I have when I, when I think back to it. And then obviously, you know, I have a ton of memories of my time at Ithaca doing games with Dan and, and Jake Chernock and Sam Cooperman and Alex Lebowitz and, you know, some of my best friends, you get a chance to work on a professional broadcast at Ithaca. And, and that's the only time in your life you get to work with like your best friends doing something like that. That sounds as professional as, you know, the WICB football broadcast do. Cause once you graduate, yeah, you, you'll make friends with the people you work with, I'm sure. But there's something special about working with your college friends. So I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the fact that, you know, for two years, my junior and senior year at Ithaca, I got a chance to be in the booth calling Ithaca football games and, and do it with my best friends to this day. So um, those are definitely all the memories that, that come back to me right away. Well, lots of memories. Wow. Here's to wishing and hoping for like more memories, you know, as you continue. It's only been a few years, you know, and that you've already had all these memories. And yes, yeah, so what you're saying at the end, I think um, easy to sort of just to take advantage of it when you are in the moment, but then sort of when you really could, you know, whether you are still a college student or you're starting off your career, you're further in, you know, and sort of having the chance to just sort of take advantage of the people you work with the skills that they have, the personality that they have, what they could teach you, what you could teach them. Um, there's a lot um, through it. And I think that it's easy sort of day by day just to go through it all and sort of, you know, not really take the time to pause and relax. But with this COVID-19 right now, I think there is a lot of breathing uh, room right now and breathing space to sort of think about that and appreciate um, the people you work with and the wonderful opportunities that people's careers have brought to them. Definitely. And when you think back to like, you know, you're going through it now, Matt, as someone who's, you know, a senior that's going to graduate, but you know, you, you never forget those times that you have with your friends, you know, on WICB and, and VIC radio, just because, you know, in the moment, it's like, you're just going through it. But then when you really think back to it and realize that even if like the people you were working with don't end up going into radio and they do something else with their careers, just the fact that you got a chance to, to work with your friends and it was a professional setting. I mean, WICB is as professional as any college radio station in the country, but it's so much fun. And you get a chance to, you know, hang out with your friends, but you're doing something that's, uh, you know, really cool. And, and, and it's something that a lot of people care about. And that's what makes it so much fun. Like, you know, I'm, I'm thinking back to the fact that, you know, when I was doing the football broadcast, I was living with all my broadcast partners at Circle Apartments for two years. Like, you know, our, our, our apartment, everyone that I lived with my junior and senior year was on the football crew, either doing halftime or pre and post or sidelines or play by play in color. And so we went from like, you know, you know, preparing for a game to going to Mooney's on a Saturday night and like having a great time. And just like, you don't get that balance in the real world where like you get to hang out and be best friends with your, also your, your work partners, if that makes sense. So it's such a great experience. And, you know, I, I've met some of my best friends through, 
uh, WICB. So, you know, I, I owe, uh, you know, so much of my life, not just career wise, but like friendship wise and like social life wise to the people I met through Ithaca College Radio. Amazing. And, and good for me to be reminded of that as well and sort of to stay in touch with people. And yeah. So a few more questions for you. Um, so do you think COVID-19 has really changed the way um, in which people listen to radio? Do you think people are consuming more like radio and media now because they have more time and they sort of want to be entertained? Or do you think it's sort of like what sort of what you're saying before, like that they're not being as much like, well, I'm not going to listen, listen to a sports show if they're not going to talk about sports. Like, what do you think? I mean, also, I guess it depends, but what, what, what do you think the nation is at right now? Yeah, I, I, think, I think everyone's a little different on this one. I, I, I've seen some studies say that people are consuming more radio than ever. They're just doing it differently. Like maybe people are using, you know, all the different streaming apps, you know, whether it's TuneIn Radio, Radio.com, or iHeart, uh, or the WICB app. Like there, there are a lot of different options to, you know, listen to content, even if you're not in your car listening on the FM or the AM dial, you know, or, you know, if you're listening to Sirius, you know, Sirius is giving away their their, their radio for free right now. It's subscription free during this pandemic. So you could just, you know, put on your, your, your Roku or your fire stick and you could play Sirius in your apartment or your house. So I think people are still consuming radio. I know podcast numbers I've read. Some have dropped a, a little bit just because people maybe aren't going to the gym and they're not commuting. So the podcast listening is maybe down, but I think there's always still a place for, for radio. There's always still a place for audible content. I, I don't think that's going anywhere. So even through this pandemic, I think people are still consuming, you know, the, the product on air. I think radio companies have to be smart about how they try and market the fact that they are still on the air. Like make sure that you push the fact that you could listen on your smartphone. You could listen on your laptop. You could listen on your iPad. You got to be able to find different ways to make your product more accessible. If the people you're relying on are commuters that are driving in the work. Well, people aren't driving in the work as much now, obviously. So I just think there's just still going to be a place for radio. It's just probably going to be different as far as how people are consuming it. So, you know, if there's a drop in the ratings for, through Nielsen, I don't think that should be a big surprise, but I think people are still consuming radio. They're just doing it differently. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I didn't really think about that much, but, you know, before I sort of asked you that question, but yeah, I think that sounds, you know, like accurate and what, you know, we could expect. Um, and sort of ending up, advice to you know sort of fellow podcasters broadcasters or even just people in general like with everything going on radio why should they be listening to radio is radio a good thing for their lives yes definitely so you know i always tell you know broadcasters that ask you know how do you break in or you know what should i do uh is you know take advantage of the opportunity now in 2020 that you know it, it's never been easier to create content, to do a podcast, to, you know, practice doing a sports update into a tape recorder or use your cell phone for it now. I mean, I mean, everything you need to do could be done on, uh, on an, uh, on an Apple iPhone or just using your laptop. And, you know, I used to edit podcasts through GarageBand when I was in college, like there, there's never been an easier way to produce content. So, you know, if you're someone that wants to be on the air, who cares if nobody's listening to it? Like I, you know, as much as I loved, you know, doing some of these podcasts at Ithaca College, it's not like we had millions of people listening to the Asbin and Budic show. It was for us. It was for us to get that experience and get a chance to talk to different guests that we would form contacts with and get a chance to get those reps. So if you're someone that wants to be on the air, even if you're not maybe on the air at Ithaca, there's tools around you. Technology exists where you could still put out content and use social media to help promote that content and just build up your brand that way. And that's the biggest thing. I wouldn't, I always tell young broadcasters, don't worry about who hears it or who doesn't do it for you because ultimately, you know, no one's ready for a, a major market job when they get out of college, you got to work towards that. So you have to just put yourself in position to get better. And the only way to get better is to get reps. So if you're an aspiring on air person, you know, find a way to do just that. And, and if you want to work in, in the industry in general, behind the scenes, it's all about relationships. And, you know, even during something like this, where there's probably not going to be a lot of companies hiring right now until things start to get back to normal, you could still use this time to send out your demo tape to different programmers or different radio uh, people and, and get feedback and try and improve that way. And just foster those relationships. If you send out 100 emails to a bunch of different radio people and only like 15 of them get back to you, well, those 15 become contacts now moving forward that you could stay in touch with every couple months and check in with and, and send new tape to and, and, you know, just try and develop those relationships. So I think there's always a way to, to try and maximize your time. And even through something like this, I think we'll see a lot of good that eventually comes out of it 
when we hear some of the stories once things do uh, get back to normal at some point. Yeah, hopefully it'll be soon. And good advice. Thank you for uh, sharing that. So, Jake, I really want to thank you for uh, giving us your time. Uh, WICBFM really appreciates it, and you know, good to stay it to uh, you know hear back from you from a few years back when you were on WICB, and that you're back with us now. It's quite a pleasure and 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 awesome to have you back. Matt, thanks so much for having me. This was a, a huge thrill to talk to uh, a fellow WICB bomber. And, uh, you know, I'm not surprised how great ICB has been doing. Though. I mean, we got Jeremy Bernard running the show. Ooh. I knew Jeremy when he was running ESPN Ithaca when I was his intern all those years ago. So it's great to see what the station uh, continues to put out year, year after year. And uh, thanks again for having me. This was a lot of fun. Yeah. And so how can people just remind people how they could listen to your shows or you know, is there a website? Is there a podcast uh, link? That people- sure. So uh, right now I don't have a time slot that I know I'm going to be on every day because of the, everything going on with the virus and whatnot. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Jake Asman. As soon as I know what I'm up to, I'm going to be putting every all the information out there. Uh, my website's jakeasman.com to find out more information and uh, to listen to SB Nation Radio. There's an app. There's a podcast. If you just search my name, whatever show I will be doing, it will pop up on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher. So Um, I am putting content out. I just don't know when specifically. So if you just, I guess, easiest way is follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and you'll see all the info posted there whenever it becomes available. Update your uh, listeners for sure. Yes. And I hope that you also, my wishes to you that you are back on air soon and everything sort of returns to normal for you and for really everybody in the world um, with everything going on. Um, But Jake, thanks again for uh, your time. And it was great to hear from you. My pleasure, Matt. Thanks again. Bye.